and it'll go. So I think this is the start of the first episode, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so for anybody who's listening and tuning in, I am Boo Boo from Your Brain Rebalanced, and I'm joined by Jeff. Hello. Uh, thank you, Jeff, saying hi, and then also Ape Man. Good evening, or morning, or wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> the, the king of uh, gifts. Definitely the king of gifts. The huh? king of gifts, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but uh, we are kind of making an eight-part audio series. Uh, I don't. There's not really a title for it, but we'll be updating it. I'm going to make some, like a page for it, I think, in the group section or something like that. And basically, we're just going to talk about just kind of aspects of porn addiction and I guess porn do CD in that regard too and hopefully kind of humanize the process and because you know when I was thinking of this I noticed a lot of the time when people talk about porn addiction it's like recovered people or, or you know or Gary who doesn't have it and he's very knowledgeable but uh, I feel like there's like a market for like not a market but like a lack of just like guys talking about it sort of and so that's sort of the idea behind this but um yeah, and so we're going to do a part in the a part series, and I guess the topic on this one is just going to be the beginning of the reboot, kind of identifying uh, how, how you identified you had a porn addiction, how you knew you had a porn addiction, tricks to beating the porn addiction, and also kind of obstacles we found along the way. But um, yeah, so it'll be it's kind of the topic. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, maybe we'll start with Jeff or something like that. But how did you know you had a porn addiction? Was there like a big event or anything like that that happened? Well, um, I think for me, it all started when um, I kind of I kind of knew that my life was was broken, you know. And there were so many things that I just had to deal with that I I, I wasn't facing up to, you know. And I think it got to the point where I kind of sat down and I was like. I was, I was interested in actually in, in kind of Buddhism and that kind of stuff. And I was reading a lot of the philosophy quite a lot before that, but I never tried meditation and it all hit me when I started meditating. I literally, I sat down and I thought, right, I'm going to meditate on my breath mm -hmm. for, for an hour. I sat down and immediately, like, I just started crying, you know, like just, just all this stuff just rose up from me and just like came out, just, just started coming out. And mm -hmm. that was the moment. And like very, very quickly, very, very quickly, I realized it fully hit me. I had a porn addiction. You know, it was an addiction. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it, you know. And so then I, I sort of, I sort of started typing into, I started Googling it and I found, you know, um, YBOP. And um, that really was the, was the start of, of the end well hopefully the end anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah. the last streak the beginning <laughs> was, of the end yeah the, that was the beginning of the end so yeah. so for, for me it was it all started with meditation really it's that that that, that was where but I, I think i always knew deep down but it was just kind of one of the things i buried away and i think like like all of us do we just we buried it away and hid from it because it was too big a thing to handle at that point in our lives and we had other stuff going on because usually i think from what i've read anyway a lot of us we had broken lives anyway and porn addiction was one part of it so the reason yeah. we run is because it's not the only thing that's fucked up, you know. So, yeah. so that for me, that was definitely that was the turning point. It was it was last summer. So nice, yeah. So Jeff, last summer you sat down and you started meditating, and you in that meditation, it just spontaneously you realized, oh, I have a porn addiction. Yeah, literally. I know, I know it sounds cliche as fuck but it yeah. doesn't actually. <laughs> it sounds it sounds it's really interesting to me. I can't believe that you would. That you were able to find that by turning inwards, yeah, you know? no, because it's pretty amazing. Well, well, I, I guess, I guess it kind of, in a way, it makes sense because, um, I mean, like porn addiction is such an external thing. It's like looking for satisfaction externally, and I'd never, until that, like, up until that point, ever looked into, like, inside me for satisfaction or for, for kind of respite or for any kind of, you know, peace. I was always thought it was happiness was completely external to me. And it was something that I couldn't control, and so I sat down and meditated, and and you know, quite suddenly, I was like, "Wow, I have this, 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 and this problem," and from that, the, the you know, it just started unraveling, just gradually, gradually unraveling. And so my first posts are kind of me kind of realizing, kind of what like at the start of it is just kind of all all of that shit just unraveling basically. And so, yeah, that that's was, actually really amazing. 
So did you just get up from your meditation, walk to the computer and start Googling porn addiction and find the forum in that way? Yeah, literally. How did you find the forum? Uh, Yeah, no, no, that's that's what I did. I mean, obviously I was was just in tears tears quite a while. while. It was was such such a realization. realization. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Sorry, it's echoing. Yeah, Yeah, you got headphones that might actually... actually... I've got headphones, yeah. yeah. I think that's the way to prevent the echoing. Okay, cool. Hey man, are you wearing headphones? I am not. Let Maybe me, just if you have if some. I find you. some, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. No pressure. Though. Okay, give I've me got a some moment. Hey man's finding some headphones, but no worries. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable that you're able to do it that way. I feel like a lot of, uh, at least for me, and then I've heard a lot of other people too, is sort of like that traumatic experience in bed with a girl, or like going to bed, and you're like, oh my god, it's not working I mean, at I- all. Yeah, I mean, I knew I knew I had problems for in that in that department, but I didn't know what it was caused by. Yeah, and um, I think one of the first points was was I read something. I was really I got like last year, like maybe last academic year, whatever. I don't know what you have the same. You guys had the same kind of. I think it was in maybe last December, okay. something. Yeah. So not December, which has gone before that. I kind of I started getting really into like game theory and that kind of stuff, like pick up stuff mm-hmm. because I was like what the fuck's wrong with me I have no urge to like chase girls and I don't really care and I really should yeah and so it was kind of me just like punishing myself I tried to like learn get, learn game yeah, um, yeah which was really messed up considering I had no libido like yeah. zero yeah yeah <laughs> so, like kind of interest in that kind of stuff but I kind of tried to force myself into it to think that I would kick start something or but I was you know still fapping like every day so <laughs> that was not gonna happen yeah quickly. um and uh, and I think from that I read something about like watching porn and something about porn addiction, and then I just kind of skipped over it because I didn't like I wasn't still so heavily in denial that I was just like no, 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 no whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I kind of gave up on that and like because it just didn't work for me, and I was like I, I don't know. I kind of went retreated, retreated back into my troglodyte cave mm-hmm. and yeah. <laughs> sort of like just kind of stayed stayed in the dark for a little bit longer before before the summer where I was like you know. Um, I'd finished my second year of university. Um, here, our degrees are three years. Well, most of them, anyway. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to change my life. I just, I just have to. Like, I have no choice. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it hit, it hit the point where actually it was like it was, it was so simple. There was cross. It was just there were two paths. It was to either hang myself or or jump off a bridge, basically kill myself yeah. or or quit porn and sort my life out. And I'm that so fucking glad I chose the latter option because, yeah honestly you know it just got that bad it just it was it was that simple it was just there was no there it just became that black and white it got to the such a severe point that it was just that black and white yeah um, yeah yeah absolutely that's amazing that you could find that through like eight minutes and introspection too because when i i definitely was like the the big moment for me was the ed problem with somebody in bed i had like a a girlfriend for three years and I had ED, you know, like I could get it up, but not very well and not consistently with her for like three years. And I just like, didn't, I didn't really care about the problem or didn't really know. And I even remember Googling this stuff and finding, uh, YBOP at the time. And this was like right in its inception too, right at the beginning of it. And I just was like, that's not me. I mean, even though I was masturbating to porn like three times a day, like that's not me. But, and then we broke up and I was single and I was still, you know, I still like wanted to be with women, but didn't have that magnetism. So I was like trying to date and stuff like that. And I remember I went to a girl's house and we started kissing and I'm like, there's literally no reaction in my body. (laughs) Like I, I don't feel it. Yeah. Not getting hard or anything like that. (laughs) It was, it was was honestly the most, one of the most embarrassing experiences I've ever had. And I, (laughs) I was like. Definitely something is wrong. And I, I thought it was low testosterone at first, like a lot of guys do. But then I'm yeah. like, so I've been masturbating to porn, yeah, yeah, for three times a day for like uh, the last five years at least. And I've been looking at porn a lot longer. I think it's I think it's probably this. So mm. that was kind of like my, my moment, my realization. But, yeah. hey, man, how did you know, out of curiosity? It was the TED Talk. Gary Wilson's TED Talk. The Great Porn Experiment? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was one, it was the night I just graduated, just graduated college, and I came home, 
and it was that first night like back Mm -hmm. and i went through just a marathon binge and the same way that i've been doing for years just porn you know the whole thing don't doesn't give a fuck because i was ignorant and somehow at the end of that i stumbled across the ted talk and i watched the ted talk and it just clicked Mm -hmm. and i realized all this anxiety and all this um just girl illiteracy and cowardice and inability to focus it was just like it makes sense yeah. i've been watching so much porn for so many years and i did all right with girls but not nearly as well as i knew that i could have mm-hmm. oh. and it just all made sense so from that moment i saw the talk and i was like all right we're gonna try it Mm-hmm. We're going to quit for as long as we can. And that'll be the test. How long we can go. If we can't go, then obviously we're addicted. It's, and yeah, I it's went, obviously a problem. Exactly. Like if you decide and you can't follow through on the decision, then there's definitely a problem. Mm-hmm. So I tried it. And I lasted two weeks. And I thought, that's okay, two weeks. And then I went another couple days and started out on just – the relapse cycle binges and binges and it kept coming so i quickly realized i had a problem a real problem kept trying to do it on my own for yikes eight months maybe Mm -hmm. and then i found the forum got logged in started journaling and now i'm here what a good place to be yeah right (laughs) absolutely yeah definitely Definitely. But no, for me, the big clincher was the TED Talk. And after that, it's been a journey of realizing just how much this is an addiction. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really floored me because they lay it out, you know, as an addiction in the beginning. But, but it's, it's really strange coming to terms with just how difficult this can be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you, don't, you don't know. I mean, you know, you sort of see it's an addiction but you don't know what addiction necessarily entails like like you don't really understand what a what a severe addiction it can be and how much of a control it really has over you because actually i mean i think i i think i realized before the big meditation kind of break i realized that porn was probably bad for me and i probably should probably stop and i'd have like weak streaks of just not doing it like what like for a week or whatever and then i just relapse and be back to doing it every day Mm -hmm. and i kind of kind of realized it was bad for me but i was in denial completely denial about the fact i had any kind of addiction um and I think you know it's just, just just that realization how of how deep it runs, you know, that is such a hard thing to kind of come to terms with. Initially, it's yeah. just it just it, it you know initially you just want to run, but you you just can't like like once you know, I think like, it gets easier, doesn't it? But it's just like mm-hmm. that first bit is scary as fuck. But you know, yeah, oh absolutely, because we all like to think that we're that we have wills, that we have willpower. And that, you know, I'll grip my teeth and I'll figure it, I'll figure out whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. something just knocks you on your ass over and over again, like, I don't know, it's, it's something else. It really shows that you have a lot of room for growth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It also shows, that, importantly, that it is addictive. Believe it or not, there's people who don't believe that still, which is kind of remarkable. But it, it blows my mind, you know. Yeah. Like e- even even my therapist and and my doctor and stuff. I mean, my doctor had read some stuff about it, but he didn't. He hadn't sort of. He wasn't fully aware of how how serious it can be. And right. you know, we, we, we're like the first guys in our generation to be to be exposed to this kind of stuff from an early age, and it's only going to happen more and more. And there's, gonna, there's growing body of knowledge about it now, scientific knowledge, and it's only going to get bigger. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're kind of like the pioneers, I guess, of of the porn generation, the porn addiction generation. Yeah. And I think it's up to us in many ways to kind of really help help those guys out there and, and reach out to them because there are so many millions of people you know what was it mm-hmm. ybop gets something like twelve thousand. or so i know it's 20 000 new visits every day isn't that wild <laughs> yeah that's yeah. crazy and, <laughs> like, and the amount of views since the new year too has been i forget the underdog posted the statistics it's over a million i mean there's like a ton of and they're novel views so i don't know how they calculate that but uh, over a million novel views or something like that. I can't remember. Blows the mind. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it, 
it's, it's definitely really wild. But, yeah, I, I, I think it's also kind of interesting, too, that th this problem isn't like, there's those of us who are addicted, but it also affects people who are just viewers, too. You know what I mean? And they don't even, aren't even really aware that it, they're being affected. The guy that I, so, when I found out that I had a porn addiction, I told my roommate, and he's been really supportive of me. It was one of the best decisions I think I made, and I wasn't even kind of really doing it for my reboot. I just wanted to tell somebody or whatever. And it's helped a lot. But he quit with me, like in conjunction. He was like a moderate user, you know, didn't wasn't anything like me, but he definitely used porn. And even he has, says he feels a lot better about everything since quitting wow. porn. So how did you do that, Fugu? I'm curious. Was it like a challenge? Because you said it didn't happen really intentionally. Telling my roommate or quitting? Right. No, telling your roommate. How did you get him involved? Uh, well, I've known him since I was like... Probably nine. I've known him for a really long time. So he's kind of my brother, almost. And I was just... I remember I told him I experienced... I wasn't really open about my erectile dysfunction issues before I had that kind of experience. That big experience that made me open my eyes and realize I was looking at too much porn. And so I told him that like I, I was having trouble getting it up. And I was going to try quitting porn, you know, as one of the things... And, you know, it, it, when you first realize, at least for me, when I first realized that, I didn't realize how much it really entailed. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I'm just going to stop. It's no problem. It's not a big deal. But, no, exactly. Uh, yeah, right? You don't really. but Because uh, it's so, it's considered such a natural thing. Yeah. And it's so not a big deal that, of course, you should be able to just stop. It's that, that easy. That's right. Yeah. And I just kind of told him when we were at the gym one day. I think we were just working out. I was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm getting... ED from looking at too much porn. He's like, yeah, I could believe that. He just kind of like agreed. I'm like, do you want to quit porn with me? He's like, definitely. So we both haven't looked at porn for like a year and eight months now. So, and that's yeah. been really nice to have him competing with me too. No, that's but, uh, awesome, man. Yeah, he's a great guy. But uh, yeah, yeah it, I just kind of told him, you know, and I was, I was fortunate enough to have known him pretty much my whole life. And I kind of, we've kind of like done everything together, really. He's really like a brother to me. So... But is he I, on the forum? He's actually going to write a success like, story does he for do the that? forum. Yeah, he's going to write one. He just wrote it, and he wants me to look at it before he posts it. So, But he's not on the forum or anything like that. He knows about it and all that sort of stuff. But you will see his success story. I will let nope. you guys know when it comes out. Highly has anticipated. He read, has he read your stuff, Fugu? Yeah, I think he's read some of my stuff. My girlfriend's actually reads all my stuff, which is like kind of disorienting. <laughs> like, yeah, you're tracking my erection quality, huh? Hmm. <laughs> but uh it's got to have some in some influence on the content yeah yeah definitely <laughs> definitely i i have to give her more shout outs i think that's the biggest thing shout out shout to, outs the to the girlfriend yeah shout out <laughs> but uh yeah so i and that's and that's what i was you know i was telling these guys before we started the recording that that's probably my biggest piece of advice for the people who are able to kick the habit completely and the people who fall in like the binge relapse cycle it's like opening up to some people around you. I think at this point, ten people around me know about it. Definitely. Like, that's is, definitely that, is that like friends? Is that family? What is that? Not family. That's that's a little bit. Not harder. family. No, I have. I really want to do that. I have not worked up the courage to tell like my mom or my dad or anything. Um, but all my roommates know now, so there's four of them, and they know like the extent of it and how involved or how much. Pornography and pornography addiction and quitting porn is such an important part of my life. And then all my girlfriend's roommates, who are girls, know, which is kind of weird. They all, they all like, know about my problem and stuff like that. So, because she told them, you know, I wouldn't expect her to just hold that secret in all to herself. She tells her best friends, too. So, yeah, there's a lot of, more people than I realize are, know it. And you just kind of own up to it. And But, yeah, I mean, like. I, I, I opened up to, I think it's some of the first people I opened up to, like the first, first I opened up to my, my best friend who I live with. Um, and then I think second, second people were my, were my parents. Mm -hmm. Like actually, like I, I just kind of, because I just felt that like, you know, I'm an only child as well. So I guess I have a different relationship with my parents slightly, but, um, I mean, they're aware of all the stuff that I've been through. And I think, um, like, like with depression and that kind of stuff. So I knew I knew that from quite an early age, but I didn't know I had it ongoing. You know, I mm -hmm. thought I'd got over it somehow by just gritting my teeth and trying. You know, standard. Um, but but yeah, no, I think I told my parents, and then it, and then it became. I realized it kind of was a non-issue. It's just like, you know, 
if you if you're around people who are non-judgmental and you think feel you can trust them it really isn't a problem to come out to them about about having a porn addiction or anything like that because you know they're going to accept you however how you come you know how you are and if they can't fucking accept that you know fuck them to be honest yeah. um and your parents are always going to always going to support you no matter what no matter what because they they they're there for you for for that reason and so mm-hmm. i think um i mean it is scary but I think of all the people I trust, really trust, probably my parents, even though, you know, we have a rocky relationship sometimes and we don't get on and we have arguments. I think, you know, my parents are, gonna, are the ones, you can never forget, you know, they're the ones that made you, you know, they they, they, they have their, your full interests at heart. And but yeah, after that, I kind of just started telling people like who, who I was close to and just started telling my friends and stuff. I'm not even sure how many people, are, who, I can't, I've not kept track of how many people I've told because for me, it's something that if it comes up in conversation, you know, yeah. I might mention it because it's not it's like I want people to be aware of this and I want them to go to YBOP. Yeah. You know, I want I want people who maybe even like I'm not that close to but trust mm-hmm. to think have that realization and who who else are they going to get it from, you know? Right. Like how many people in the world are addicted to porn? Millions and millions and millions of guys, right? Oh, and girls, oh, yes. and girls. Yeah, and so if we don't talk about it openly, or at least vaguely openly, you'd have to be completely open. You can tell, like a white lie. You can say maybe I'm, I was I used to have a problem with porn, but I stopped watching it and everything got better. You know, that, yeah. that's kind of that's kind of how deep I go with people I don't really know very well. Um, mm. Then and I, and I say you know it's a really addictive thing. You know, it affects your brain, the dopamine, and all this, and your limbic system. And, and I talk about that, and they think I can see these guys, you know, and like you see the cogs to you, the cogs whirring, and mm-hmm. they're like shit, and that's their realization. And you're like. I just did that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know they've gone to YBOP and you know they've looked that shit up and you know they'll that they'll they'll be on the road to recovery too eventually. Like it might they might go through a stage of denial, but like like I, I think they're, they're they're telling someone about it and they're telling someone about it, you know. Mm. Telling someone about it doesn't necessarily have to involve the whole story, the whole the whole picture. I mean, if you're not comfortable with that, you can just say, Yeah, I used to have a problem with porn. I'm over it now. I don't watch it anymore. But yeah, it causes loads of problems with like ED and all this kind of shit. Have you heard about that? You know, yeah. you checked that's out it. the science. Yeah, I do exactly. And that's all you need to say. Thing. That's all you need to say. And and then, and then and then that's already that you've already kind of oh, you've kind of brought it out there. And it, mm-hmm. and people people just like people don't give a shit. They, honestly, <laughs> they don't judge you really. Yeah. Like you're just like yeah, <laughs> you used to have problems. So what? Loads will have used to have problems, you know, and they've got over them. So if anything, yeah. they respect you. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I I do the same thing. I, yeah, I've done it to people in class. People I see when I'm going out and stuff like that. You just kind of, yeah. you know, you don't go into too much detail, but you no. you plant that seed in their brain that yeah. you know maybe there is more to porn than you thought there was. Yeah, definitely. Sort of, I feel like that's important too. Yeah, definitely. But definitely. okay, let's get back. Let's get back to the topic of the beginning of the reboot a little bit. So yeah. after you guys found out and you guys quit or decided to quit, uh, what was it like? Was there anything that helped you a lot? What were the first two weeks like? What were the ups and downs? Eight Man, do you want to take it? Sure, I'll take it. Let's see. Those inter, those, the initial period. For me, my best periods have been if I have some sort of date tied goal. Like I have, there's a date in the future, there's an event that's going to happen. And I'm trying to really become prepared for that event. Mm-hmm. Those are the days, I mean, those are the streaks, really, that end up being really long. For me, I've been, <laughs> it's been two years since I saw that TED Talk. I've been trying to quit ever since. Yeah. But the times when I begin anew, you know, pick yourself back up, dust yourself off. It's the times when I'm going for some sort of day in the future that I do the best. Yep. Some at, like maybe, I don't know, it's the 4th of July in a month or whatever. And I really want to, you know, I want it to be a good day. Then all of a sudden I'm working for something and every single day I can get up and make those sacrifices. Mm-hmm. For me, those have been the most manageable uh, times in fighting this addiction is when I have something concrete in the future that is going to pass that 
I have the easiest time. But yeah. what about you, Fugu? I mean, you've gone a year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely, in the beginning, set date goals. That was my big thing. I was like, because I remember when I first found it is when all the older guys were recovering. And it was like 8 to 12 weeks. You know, you've never seen that sort of stuff. And Lucky I was like, bastards. Yeah, I know. Well, I remember, I remember <laughs> finding it. I'm like, okay, I'll just quit. Eight weeks, I'll quit. And I was, you know, I was telling Jeff before, I was like, I was quitting. My initially, I was quitting primarily for ED. So I'm like, eight weeks, I'll quit. I'll be able to get erections. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's better now. But, uh, and after eight weeks went by, I realized that it was probably going to take longer. Actually, you know, this leads me to a point, though. I experienced a really, really, really strange thing at the beginning of my reboot where I, I quit. And I was like 50 some days into it, and I actually felt almost completely cured at that point. Cured of ED, and also I felt incredible. Almost like superpowers that people describe on the forums. Kind of sounds like cliche or stuff like that, but... Did uh, you I say 15 that. days into it? 50, 50 some. 50! Yeah, probably close yeah, to I, 60. I think I got that too, uh, around that mark. Uh, yeah. Is that maybe, 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 maybe just after 60 days, I think. I think it was somewhere between 60 and 70 uh, like I think my, my my biggest streak was 133 days. Yeah, um, and I think yeah, like I felt yeah, definitely just absolutely productive and just mm-hmm. just 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 a sexual animal, you know, just yeah. completely just just ju- 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 just so like into the conversation with girls much more than ever before. And you'd see them being receptive, and you'd be like, yeah, you know, because you'd really you'd actually have that desire to 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 go for it rather than just think. Oh, I kind of want it, but I don't really care if mm-hmm. it doesn't work out. You know, you, you you'd make it happen because yeah. because you had a libido that that worked and it was and everything was ticking over just right. And it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling when that happens. And unfortunately, I've you know, I relapsed over Easter a couple yeah. of times. And I mean, not to full high speed internet porn, but to you know you know pictures and various other various other shit. So, um, um, so 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, since then I've been in a kind of weird flatline again, but. You know, I remember that feeling, and uh, this this is my last streak now. I think I can't. Yeah. Like I haven't got time for that shit. I haven't got time for porn. I haven't got time for. I've got projects. I've got shit going on in my life. I've got I've got places to be, people to see, mm-hmm. stuff to do. Porn is not one of them. It doesn't it doesn't fit in my agenda. Yeah. yeah. It simply doesn't. So so I mean, and even when I relapsed, I didn't binge. So yeah. like I just relapsed like one off, and then I'd be like, that's oh shit. Hugely important. I believe. Yeah, that's hugely Definitely. yeah. Like that's okay. that's the difference between an addict and a non-addict. An addict can't help but to binge. So if you can slip and not binge, <clears throat> then yeah. that's a sign of recovery. Definitely, definitely. It's, yeah. it's a good progress too. I think that's yeah. self-control, and you don't I let think, it spiral out of control too. I mean, yeah. the things that a binge can do to your brain is, you know, like in terms of your reboot, and your rewiring is, depending on how long the binge is, it can be pretty detrimental. So. Definitely. I mean, I definitely got into a spiral of like a vague spiral. Well, it was definitely a spiral, and definitely had to. I felt myself having to fight it, but it mm-hmm. wasn't like like even though I was kind of on my own, I was at my parents' house, I didn't really have any friends around, and I was kind of lonely, and I was just kind of you know, it, it was just it got from just from boredom and loneliness. Those are the two things that 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 that, that trigger me the, the most. You know, I'm just bored. I've got nothing to do. I'm sitting around all day, and I've got no friends to see. I've got nothing. I've got no motivation. That's when I start peaking. Mm-hmm. That's when I start, uh, you know. That's when I start going on Omegle or whatever, and like meeting girls like face to face, and then they take get their tits out, and you're like, oh shit, and then you've relapsed, and then yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And it's just like, like that was what caused it for me. It was Omegle. It was that. It, it's always the ones that you don't, you know, the stupid shit like that. Like yeah. you just kind of, you know. And now, and now I think, like I wanted to test. I kind of wanted to test it as well because I know I I thought I'd recovered completely, mm-hmm. and I hadn't. But yeah. I thought I had, and I thought it wouldn't affect me that much, and it was stupid. I, I, and I, I, I read other people's journals, and I know that that's not the case. But you know how your brain tricks you, and yeah, it's just yeah. one of those things. Yeah. But then I picked myself back up, and I'm just back on it now. So Good for it's you. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. well done. <laughs> Cheers, dude. <laughs> and that's something. It's something that I'm actually interested in. That phenomenon of like that first reboot going faster and feeling more complete in a quicker amount of time. It's just like. I don't understand what that was or anything. Because when I, I mean, I did 60, I guess probably, we'll just call it 60 days. I did 60 days, no PMO. And I didn't even look at porn. I just masturbated. And I remember waking up the next morning and like something was wrong. It was just different. I had like five panic attacks in three weeks. I didn't even know what a panic attack was. Like 
I, I, I thought I was having asthma and I went to the doctor for asthma, but now I know it was just like tons of general anxiety and it just was completely different after that point and my reboot was just a lot slower. But And you said this was just from you masturbating. No Yeah, problem. this is just an orgasm. Masturbated orgasm. Interesting. Yeah. It was it's just a very strange thing that happened. And that was that was like very depressing too. I remember getting to sixty days again after that and I was like, I am not even close to where I was before. <laughs> like and my concentration was gone and all those sorts of things. So and I, I see some other people who have kind of reported the same things, but for for all the new rebooters, mm-hmm. don't get discouraged by that. It happens. Yeah. Just keep going. It's, it's a like long a, road. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a powerful force. You gotta be willing to walk and take some defeat and just keep going. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I, like, like I, I think the strength, the strength of character kicks in when, when even after a binge, even you know, you, it's that that's not the end of you. That's not uh, that, 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 that that's no time to say you know, um, oh, I give up. Then I'm just gonna you know, th- there's gonna be a point where you just think, okay, right, time to get back on it. Yep. You know, yeah, and you just, just pick yourself up on. and you just carry the fuck on. It's like it's like you know. So you what know, do you do if you're in, those, up, in those moments, uh, like the days afterwards? You know, like is there are there tricks and techniques? This is you know applicable for people who just had a binge or who are just starting. Yeah, you know, I mean, so, something that works for me personally is is meditation. It's just, like, meditation is so so helpful. I mean, even when the brain fog, it just, just even when you're like steeped in brain fog and kind of thoughts of porn or whatever, just just observing your mind and becoming mindful of like the thoughts going on in your mind, and just sitting there and kind of just observing your mind, just being there, sitting there, and just mm-hmm. looking at what's going on in your mind, thinking, okay, anxiety. I bet I've got a bit of anxiety in there. And then just not instead of like trying to force it away, just letting it be, and then just kind of just just think, okay, I'm going to let it be. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, like it's pretty much gone. Like within like at least five minutes, like four or five minutes, it will like your anxiety will be far less, and that that kind of stuff keep, keeps me going because it's kind of like I'm giving myself rest from myself. You know the yeah. constant du- bullshit dialogue you have going on in your head. You know meditation just lets you escape from all of that. And I think we all, I think all of us here meditate, right? I think, yeah. Yeah, I do. I used to do it more often, but yeah, not as much. It's, I really should do more. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, we we will get into. I, I got into like a uh, you know a bit of a thing with that. Like yeah. recently, I haven't been doing my half an hour a day, which I which I kind of used to do during my during my really successful mm-hmm. reboot times. And I'm going to get back on it, and I'm getting back on it. Um, but yeah, meditation absolutely vital. The other thing is just 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 being kind to yourself, being kind to yourself, and just not not being yourself up about stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a hard thing to conquer, and so just be your own best friend in this. You know, like yeah. you be your own support, be your own. You know, if if anyone, you know, if anyone's going to be compassionate with you, with you, it's you, mm-hmm. because you know how hard it is. And so instead of well, thinking, you and your mom, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the parentals, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, guaranteed I mean, support. Exactly. Yeah, and if you need anyone to talk to, you know. T- Tell 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 your closest friends, family, whatever whatever works. Yeah, you know, definitely. That's my advice, definitely. Yeah, yeah. There's a mantra on uh, some, some guys' mantra, but like, do the next right thing. And yeah, I really really like that. It just it yeah. takes it moment to moment, decision to decision. And if you can just apply that to your decisions, it's I, I mean nobody does it perfectly, but it's really it helps me a lot, definitely. Mm. Especially when I'm like kind of just anxious or confused or, you know, don't have my priorities right or feel, I mean, recently I've had a lot of trouble with orgasms with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Can they still yeah, throw me that. off? Yeah. Oh, I mean, terrible trouble. Yeah, I know. I hate it. Yeah, same. But yeah, uh, I just get a lot of brain fog and anxiety afterwards. And that mantra definitely helps a lot in those and long distance running. I have a lot of fun with that too. I just want to make right. sure I yeah. understand. Yeah. You Go- say you, you're getting brain fro- brain fog and trouble with orgasms with your girlfriend. Right. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. So you're trying to hold off from orgasms in general. Uh, yeah. I think ideally in my situation right now, I want to, I still have like, I just, my ED comes back and all those just kind of nagging signs of my porn addiction just creep back after sometimes even one orgasm. And so I know I felt my best on a 50 day streak of just rewiring with her, you know, just lots of like kissing and being together sort of thing, but not having any orgasm. 
I felt I felt amazing, and then I had an orgasm. It kind of all collapsed, and I haven't gotten a good streak since then. But um, yeah, it's not for everybody either. I know a lot well, of people have it in their reboot and include it in the reboot, and they reboot fine with orgasms. But it's definitely not my experience at all. At the well, risk of prying deeply into your personal life, no, and I apologize. I in love advance. sharing. Um, does this mean that you are having sex with your girlfriend and not orgasming? I have done that, yeah, a few times, which is. I, I have sensitivity issues too, so sometimes not orgasm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we say? But um, yeah, I think that is in terms of like uh, the fastest way to rewire your brain. Um, that's like the best if you can do it. It's, it takes a lot of self control, but yeah. I have done that. But I I'm not always lucky enough. Sometimes I fuck it up, and then sometimes I just want to have an orgasm <laughs> yeah well, are you yeah. familiar with the oneida colony Mm-mm. oh well i'll maybe outside of the the context of the show i'll send you some some stuff there was a utopian colony back in the 1800s the uh-huh. leader um advocated sex without orgasm i don't know it sounded oh, familiar to what you were talking about so yeah, yeah. Oh. there's a lot of that's there's a lot of um that that in history actually I was reading about that it's uh yeah co- co- coitus interruptus yeah and yeah and absolutely it, a lot of great men in, in history I, th- I think it was IFC Neville uh-huh. posted something I was someone I can't remember who it was who posted something about um a list of great men who have avoided sex or abstained or something like that and it was like coitus interruptus so many guys like great men have like avoided orgasm because they because they know it preserves their energy their inner kind of energy it's yeah. crazy. And that sex energy is such a strong, potent force. You know, we Absolutely. need to kind of control this. Yeah. And it, it, it's amazing. I, I think, actually, I think it's been so insightful, you know, really knowing this stuff. Because think about it. Like, once, like, with the knowledge us guys have now, think about what it's going to be like when, we, when we're fully out of it and we're able to, you know, have normal sex again or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because we're going to have such knowledge about, not, not only about, you know, addictions, but about ourselves and about sexual energy and about, about, love and about all of these things that a lot of people don't don't ever learn you know ever because Absolutely, they never have the need yeah. to need to learn that stuff they never need to because then they never have this these kind of serious problems so yeah. we're lucky in a sense you know out of, out of bad always comes good you know it makes you really like, in tune with yourself that's what i've noticed definitely. throughout this whole process like your the way you feel on a certain day what makes you feel this way what makes you feel that way what things you like things oh. you don't like like that has been one benefit you know mm-hmm. I, I feel like too that i mean it anything bad that happens to you, you can always flip it into a positive in your life, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, this is definitely, like, the porn addiction is not some bad things to a lot of us, but, like, we can all make this positive. And a lot of people, you know, once they have, they feel like they're out of it, like you said, like, it, you appreciate it so much more, you know? And I, I remember I've had those experiences, too, like, on long rewiring streaks with my girlfriend or that initial reboot where I was like, you know, this is, like, what I'm aiming for, this feeling that I have right now this feeling that I lost some time ago and like, and not sound cheesy or anything like that, but no, it doesn't sound cheesy. I think it's what a lot of people are chasing. Yeah. When you say this feeling that you're, that you're working for and that you're chasing, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned having a period around 50, 60 days. Yeah. yeah. But is that where those kind of things, those kind of feelings came online or is that something that you noticed lately? Yeah, I've actually had two of those instances where I felt like I was, like, 90% there, and then it fell away somehow. But uh, the first one was definitely in that that first beginning reboot phase that I talked about. And the second one, I went on a, I kind of mentioned this earlier, like a 50 to 60 day rewiring, no orgasm streak with my girlfriend. And so this I, was after you met your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, we'd known each other for about, and I told her about the problem and all that sort of stuff. And we know each other for about three months. And we did this, and that I felt that then too. I felt absolutely amazing. I remember, and I remember like this is what it's all about. I mean, I remember feeling this way when I was a kid before the addiction. I remember, it's just I can't. You know, it's almost hard to explain. You're just happier. Yeah. When you internalize things. You internalize things in a positive way. Your libido's yeah. high. Like it's. You don't have as much like. Um, you don't have many neuroses. All your neuroses seem to kind of just disappear yeah. into kind of smoke because you're kind of like. Yeah. I'm on top of the world. Yeah, I've got my dick. 
got my balls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. You know, you get out of bed, you roll out of bed in the morning, you just yep. feel like a fucking don. You're like, okay, today's going to be a good day. You put your boxes on, yeah. whatever. You fucking put a pair of jeans on, put a t-shirt on, you fucking roll out of bed, go to work, whatever. Do, whatever you, <laughs> do the shit you need to do. You just do yeah. it because you just want to do it. You know, yeah. you don't feel like, oh shit, I've got to go and do this. Nothing feels he- as heavy. It's just kind of like, mm-hmm. everything's just a lot lighter. I remember and just, yeah. Yeah, falling asleep at night, I felt excited for the next day. Like this kind of, I almost couldn't sleep at night because of the way I felt. I just, what the next day yeah. would bring, you know? I can't wait to the next day, yeah. It's yeah, really it's incredible. So. I would say after having that orgasm and losing that, it was insanely depressing. But, but you know, yeah. that's what, what we aim for, really. And I think most of us, when we get there, will be there. And I think, I think it takes good strategy and just knowing what works for you to get there. But... Definitely. Now, Fugu, you were saying those kind of days fell off. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you mean to say that they fell off or are they still, I mean, is that still how you're feeling? No, I, I definitely feel better right now than I have in my entire life. But I'm not riding that high libido or euphoria that I did in those two periods. I, I right see. now, I'm not very anxious, but I am kind of low libido. I experience brain fog and it's kind of a little, I would say, numb in comparison to those experiences. But mm-hmm. I am... Definitely, even right now in this moment, in you're past, good. Oh, you're yeah. good to go. I mean, four years ago, when I was in the thick of my addiction, I it, it was awful, like the way I felt, and I didn't really know. But in comparison to that, I'm way better. I mean, there's yeah. no getting around it. But but I'm still not there. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I still it, when you get to that place, it's a click, and you're there in that place. You're not really sure how you got there, what part of your brain is on and off, but. Uh, yeah. Just work to get there. Strategy and planning a little bit. Fugu, can I just ask you? Um, sure. So, sorry, just just to kind of update myself because I can't quite remember. Um, so, these the, those two relapses after the 60-day periods or whatever, mm-hmm. are they part of your one-year streak or is your one-year streak after that? Uh, so, my relapses were only to orgasm. I guess when I – I guess it depends how you're counting things. So yeah, I, I know. Yeah, it's complicated, isn't it? Yep. It's not I as have, simple as that. I have gone nine months without – Porn, masturbation, and orgasm in a row before. And that was my Shit. life streak, yeah. And before that, I went 60 days. Before the nine months, I went 60 days and then masturbated one time without porn to orgasm. And that's what threw me off a ton. So, and then after my nine-month streak, I have only had orgasms with my girlfriend since then. Fair enough. Yep. No, it sounds like a very, uh, very sort of good... Good. It's, it's, it's just such an interesting journey. Everyone's got their own kind of story, but mm-hmm. we all have similar reactions to the sem- similar kind of stimuli. And it's just kind of, yeah, it's just amazing to kind of... Yeah. <laughs> so weird to be talking to you guys. Like, well, we're on the scary. frontiers of something frontier. that nobody's actually thought to look at. I yeah. mean, there's, there's no research on this whatsoever. We're in the trenches, so to speak. Yeah. And yeah. Us, us guys, especially us guys that are, and guys younger than us too, but particularly... All of us are in our early 20s, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. 24. Um, shout out. <laughs> yeah. Um, 24. I mean, I, I, I saw my first porno mag at 8 and was on high-speed porn by 11. You know? <sighs> so, I mean, it's just so deeply entrenched in so many years. and Yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, most of us have maybe a decade mm-hmm. of high-speed daily <laughs> porn use behind us yeah. and that decade represents the decade in which we came online so we're an experiment we're a science yeah. experiment we don't know it a lot of us don't know it mm-hmm. but we are a science experiment exactly mm. and that's that's uh gary wilson's thing that was almost the name of his ted talk pretty much and he's the great experiment the great porn experiment right great porn experiment baby <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, he's totally right, too. And so that's yeah. why I think there's like a generation of us guys still on the forum right now, and we just can't be discouraged by that. We have to understand that it's going to take longer, that this is like a holistic process, and we do this day by day. And, I mean, I remember when I hit six months and I wasn't cured, I was like so depressed. I'm like, I, is there something? I might just be broken for good. And it's totally not true because I've reaped great improvements since then, but like, we have to adopt like a long-term philosophy with this, all of us, and not be upset if... Well, absolutely. Yeah. That first decade in which we were being exposed to high-speed in, high internet porn at the same time that it first came into existence mm-hmm. just so happened to be those 10 years when our brains were their most plastic and most yeah. impressionable. 
Exactly. I mean, this is deep. This is deep in a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And it's not the kind of thing that you can kick on a weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, really kind of how to. I thought it was when I first kind of started. I think we all did a bit. I know. <laughs> I, I, remember I, saw, I remember I saw a wipe up and I'm like, eight weeks. It's going to yeah. be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I completely expected. I was just like, all right, I'll set my timer. Mm-hmm. It'll be 90 days and then I'll be He-Man. And 90 yeah. days later, I was still like struggling. Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but, yeah, I guess getting back to the, the topic, I, I think we're at a lot longer time than we, 45 minutes already. I guess we'll do five more minutes. Does that sound good to you guys? Time yeah. flies when you're having fun. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's been going pretty fast, surprisingly fast. I didn't think we'd have enough to say, but we do. Um, <laughs> what, I guess, just any advice that you give to somebody starting a reboot? Because I know that I know from my experience that when I started it, it was, I was in such a different position than I am now, and I wish I would have known some different things i guess i just would have known a little bit more about it Abe, don't take this one sure sure my advice is two-part first of all have a date an event in the future and on that day you're going to be completely porn and masturbation free and that's the day that you're working towards Mm -hmm. so every day no matter what temptation or craving or thing that makes you want to give comes up, you can say, nah, if I do that, it's going to totally fuck with this day that's hanging out over here. It's a month or two away. Yeah. And start small even. Have a month. Or maybe yeah. even two weeks. Just whatever. But you got to mm-hmm. – you're working for that day. Yeah. Count the and, days. That really helped yeah. me. That really, sure. really helped me. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. And secondly, get ready to relapse. <laughs> this shit is not easy. Yeah. It's not easy by any stretch of the term. It's maybe it's the hardest thing I've ever tried to do. Yeah. And well, I've don't tried get to ready. Do some hard shit. Like m- 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 maybe like yeah, I mean like don't get ready to relapse but but prepare yourself in case you do. So like don't don't think you're going to and just yeah. give up. But but right. at the same don't time tie, find don't a tie balance. Your, yeah. Don't tie your ego to yeah. like I'm yeah. going to be that guy who never All relapses about the ego. ever. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Because if That's if you tie your identity to that, then the second that you hit some difficulty, you're going to go to pieces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just totally be ready that. to be ready to take whatever hit comes yeah. your way. Yeah. Most of the people who have written success stories have had relapses. So yeah. I mean, that's just one thing to remember. I I think there's very few. I think Gabe might be the only one who hasn't ever. Is he a guy who just says, yeah, I said I was going to quit and then I quit and then I never watched porn again. Yeah. He did that basically. He was, yeah. Watched, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like the only one I can think of. So pretty much everybody yeah. else went through relapses and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, Jeff? I think, yeah, my advice is actually, it's less porn and more life. Um, for me, the main thing with kind of overcoming kind of porn was, to look at it from a from a wider perspective, you know, a really wide perspective, you know, start, you know, I, it may, it may, it may sound cheesy or but whatever, but but for me, really finding some spirituality was was, was key. I mean, I'm not religious. I'm not. I'm not kind of. You know, I, I don't. I'm not indoctrinated with some kind of any kind of belief. I just think that getting back to your kind of your base self what it is to be human, to think about those kind of things and really meditate on those things, those issues, which is, you know, our existential crisis that we're all in. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of stuff takes you out of your head, takes you out of your own fucking head and gets you thinking about stuff that is from a, like just mu- seems much more important. So for me, taking myself out of myself through meditation, through reading, through, through, through um, engaging in various different activities and hobbies really help me just to kind of, you know, and, and just deep stuff, connecting with people on deep levels really, really help me just to kind of get out of my own head because I think with porn it's very much like it's all you, 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 you know, you're always thinking me, 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 I, 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 this, this, this. you're clinging to your ego, you think your ego is the inherent source of your happiness or is inherently existent in any way but when you look at it, you know, who are, who are you, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a it's a body with you know consciousness or whatever, but you can you can rationalize however you want, but just find some fucking spirituality, find some wonder at life, you know. Think like you know, just just really get to that level. Like you know, th- when you hit the day when you can look at a flower and you can think, you know, fuck me, that's beautiful, that's amazing, and <laughs> not think nice, you're being a yeah. pussy, and not think you're being a pussy and think, oh, that's fucking pussy, and only pussies think that. 
that's the day when you can really call yourself a man, I think, because yeah. th- th- that's the day when you can be like, yeah, I'm on the road to recovery. Because that's when you're being honest with every part of yourself, your feminine side, your masculine side, everything. You have to have all those aspects to be a fully rounded human being and become an alpha male eventually, which, what our, which are yeah. what all our goals are. An alpha male meaning just a person who is, who is in control and of understands himself. himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. great advice, I think. And I think Jeff is bang on too, like very much on point because Jeff, you talk a lot about meditation and Buddhism and how that's helped you. And I think that's so important because at the end of the day, this is an affliction of our mind and meditation allows you to make a kind of contact with your mind. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a psychological problem and, and, and I, I think it, 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 it's aversion, isn't it? It's an aversion. It's, it, it's, it's uncontrolled desire, which is a very common thing in mm-hmm. uh, Buddhism. I don't know how much you guys have you know, read about this kind of stuff, but uncontrolled desire is one of the main, the main things that stops us from achieving true happiness, which is just our uncontrolled desires that we, that we let, that, that we just keep trying to feed and feed and feed. It's like I went to a talk the other day on this, and um, she talked about, the, the teacher said that um, there's, it's like, it's like when you're when you're really hungry and you, you want a pizza and you think, okay, I'll just have a pizza and then I'll be happy because the pizza will make me happy because right now the pizza is an inherent source of my happiness, right? Mm-hmm. And then I don't want to get too, without going on and get too deep because I don't understand we're short on time, but yeah. um, you know, w- when you have that pizza, you know, eventually you'll have too much of that pizza and you'll feel sick of it, right? And the same thing happened with porn. Initially, we started watching. We thought, "Oh, this is bloody brilliant!" You know, we can mm-hmm. we can watch this all day long. Why not? You know. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of got to the point where we're thinking, "Ah, she doesn't want to watch porn." But then you kind of do it anyway because you think, "Oh, I can't really sleep without it." Whatever. And then before you know it, like you're kind of stuck in this kind of cycle where you just literally cannot stop watching porn. Yeah. And that's uncontrolled desire to the, to the max, where something that could be good isn't good. You know, you know, like porn is neither bad nor good inherently. It's yeah. inherently free of any properties it's just our minds that make it so it's so it's up to our minds to then release ourselves from that from that kind of trap that prison that endless cycle of kind of just just relapses and stuff like that it's up to our minds and uh, and through controlling and letting go of this kind of baggage we can i think we can eventually start to, to build ourselves up again that, that, that's kind of my approach anyway that's more my kind of thing yeah and jeff that's really <laughs> insightful stuff actually <laughs> This has been beneficial well, for me. I mean, hopefully people like it, but that was good for me. And that's all that matters, right? He's a gentleman and a scholar, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Well, you, I'd say my <laughs> advice is really similar to that. Um, just get out and do stuff that's different. You know, like don't sit inside. Don't just occupy your mind with stuff. I think uh, Gabe has always been my role model for this sort of stuff ever since I started. And his philosophy was just go out and live, love, and laugh, which is mm. kind of cheesy, but I just... I like it. If you're just doing that, I, I feel like you don't have time to think about porn. Really. Absolutely. And yeah. Just, and then open up to a friend. That's something that's really hard to do, but I attribute a lot of my successes to it. I couldn't imagine doing it without having a my best friend there who knew in real life. So I think that would be yeah. my advice. And prepare for up and down, ups and downs. It always yeah. happens. Many ups and downs. Yep. Many ups but, and downs. Really yeah. up and then really down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a process for sure, but that's where we get our depth. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you don't and all, yeah, and if you don't deal with it on a deep level, you know, uh, I, I think I think, you know, that's a really good way of approaching it from a really deep level. And I think we all go deep in our journals, don't we? All all three mm-hmm. of us. We you know, we, we we really just talk about the depths of when we're in depths of despair, we don't forget we don't you know feel feel bad about kind of just saying it and that's the great thing about the kind of journals and stuff is mm-hmm. in the forums is that people are just honest and open because that because it's kind of through a screen i guess yeah um you feel kind of more confident in, in just just saying exactly how you feel and what's on your mind and yeah. so you then you can then develop your own techniques to deal with it yeah so definitely yeah so i think we're close to Close to an hour, fifty-four minutes right now. So it's that was time just, for yeah. a sign-off song. Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should throw some music in here, or something like that. Something yeah, we should. Yeah, get a little, get a little tune going. <laughs> yeah, get something good. But I think for now we'll just call it that. And thanks, you guys. I oh. would love to have both of you on here again. And then I know Game Over wanted to be here with us, but he has to work. So um, well, he's on the other side of the fucking planet. No shit, right? That's really hard to coordinate those yeah. Australians. <laughs> 
he has he has to get up at like ridiculous o'clock just to yeah <laughs> just to to do it. yeah and then, you know he has like a Monday through Friday work schedule too and sometimes works on the weekend so but mm. he definitely has the best arms on Ybop so we have to have him on here just by that regard <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> all right so I guess we'll just sign out and say that we're probably going to do seven more of these with just a different topic and hopefully if you guys like it keep tuning in i guess and if not don't tune in <laughs> watch it when you're brushing your teeth it's the award-winning teeth brushing background music that's right that's right <laughs> we have we're gonna win that award we're gonna accept that very soon so. but i think i'll actually have this in an mp3 format too so if people want to download it i think it'll be on youtube and then an mp3 format so and i guess we'll just say well, we're signing out right now, so you guys want to say anything? Adios, amigos. Yeah, this is eight man. guys. Keep being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys later. <laughs> All right.